and they are at the giving end. And they say, oh, you want something? Okay, secretary gave this. And you feel, thank you so much. And you go out and you do the charity, right? You serve the people. You serve the handicapped. You serve the poor. You serve the girl child. You serve the unemployed. That probably is charity. And even if that big man, the big boss, the rich person did not give the money. Do you think charity will not take place? Charity must go hand in hand with your life. As fathers and mothers, teachers and principals, one thought that we can give to our children is give, give and give. The other day I was talking again to my nephew and I said, Mother Teresa said, in giving do you receive? And he said, I do not expect anything when I give. I said, yes, it's very noble of you to think that way. You are very rare. That's why I said, give him a clap. Most people give charity to get something in return, right? And that return is to be mentioned in the newspaper, to give you a few examples, to be seen on the television, to be talked about, to be welcomed in organizations as the most charitable person but he did charity with a purpose and the purpose is to get a name or he did charity for saving taxes. That is the new formula of charity, right? They say if I give, uh, the first thing I hear when I approach people from big companies have you got the tax exemption certificate, ma'am? Can you please send me a copy of that? They think I might tell a lie. And if I say, you know, I don't have the ATG, which is required in Delhi for a donor to get exemption on his taxes or her taxes, <coughs> they become a little mute about it. The point that I'm making is, let us look at charity as a part of our lives. And charity is not necessarily giving in terms of money and material. Charity is in the mind. Charity is a smile. Charity is kindness. Charity is respect. And I'm sure if we start looking at our fathers and forefathers, it came with our upbringing. It beca became a part of your genes. It was a way of life. My mother if she was alive, would have been 100 year old. She got up in the morning and she did not speak till about 9 o'clock. And we used to really tease her. Some one word from you. She said, no, I will not speak. I mean, later she would tell us because I'm very afraid that I might get into argument with my husband. <laughs> I think she was being charitable to herself and to the family and the five children because early in the morning when husband and wife start tugging with arguments, everything goes outside the window. For me, I thought that was the greatest expression of charity. She was sacrificing. She was following silence to be able to maintain certain element of peace in the home. Otherwise, the little children keep on troubling the mother, my clothes, my shoes, my this, my that. So she left them alone. Mind your own self. Take care of your things, get ready and go to school. Your mother is silent till there is absolutely call of the hour to start doing things and speaking. I imbibed it. Early morning, I prefer not to get into any kind of uh, thinking which might lead to certain controversies or that might have paradoxes, that might have conflicts so that the day passes when your mind is silent and you're thinking about things to do, maybe charity. Then she would, uh, we would first have those, uh, not the gas uh, stoves, the other ones with coal, and she would put a little ghee in it. The five elements were introduced to me through my mother. The fire, respect the fire. Okay, we put a little ghee there. Then earth, you would go out, and water is of earth, water, fire, air, and the sky, you know, five elements. She would go and do pranam to the sun and she would put some water there. She would put that water into the earth so that that is 
preserved, right? And going out in the fresh air to feel that you are living in a world of nature. You're not waking up in an air-conditioned room and you don't know which side the sun comes from, east or west. It's because you're not really putting some water to the sun to thank him for your survival and existence, for your life and living. And you don't care where the fire comes from. You ask a child, what's the value of fire? He will probably say, I'll just see what are the instructions on the pipeline and how the stove is put on, etc. The point that I'm constantly making is that we as human beings, we as a part of humanity, must not forget our roots. We must not understand, we must not forever forget that if we uh, forget the basis of our life, then we are going to make our lives more complicated. Let us not become heroes and heroines by giving, uh, doling charity. Charity is not in giving. Charity is in action of sacrifice. Charity is in action of making this world a better place to live in. Charity is in understanding the needs of each individual you come across and finding out what is his unique need that make him that can make him a little happier. If I have touched the lives of 50, 100, 1000, 10,000 people in a day, if I have made them understand that I love them. Jyot se jyot jalate chalo, pyar ki ganga bahate chalo. If there is love, there is affection, you return, you get in return the same, not like the money which has no interest value now, even today, when the money has lost its value, the human kindness and charity has got all its value. It will never be downgraded, right? Unless you downgrade it. It's not in the hands of the banks to give no value for your wealth. And if you call me again, and if Mr. Chadda puts me up, I shall be here again. I saw that Lal Jhandi, Though he made it green to tell me to stop. So therefore my, I must end here. But I have so much to speak about. So much to share with you. But remember one thing. That we are all part of the same humanity. It doesn't matter what religion you have. It doesn't matter where you were born. It doesn't matter whether you are an Indian or a local Dubai guy, or if you're a Malayali, or a Punjabi, or a Sikh, or a Nisai, what vibrates is a common heart, what vibrates is a common joy, and above all, what vibrates to live is to move from darkness to light. And if we can be enlightened together, we will all see light in what we do. Thank you. Very much. We thank Madam Chona for those wonderful words. Give her a big round of applause. <laughs> On one condition, that whenever she is in Dubai, she has to make a small visit and give us some time, five or ten minutes. We will be very much delighted to have this kind of wonderful <coughs> words of wisdom and uh, I thank uh, Dr. Shankar, Dr. Uh, Professor Harsh Chadda for giving us this opportunity to listen to her. Yes.